Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to set up your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller onto DS4 Windows. With this setup, you can then use your PS5 DualSense controller onto any application that supports X input, such as the PCS X2 and the RPCS3 emulators. Please note, Steam also does support the DualSense controller, but the Steam game that you want to play also needs to have support for the controller. You do not need to run DS4 Windows if you are looking to play Steam games with the DualSense controller. You only run the DS4 Windows program if you are looking to use your controller to other applications that can support X input but have no way of talking to the controller. DS4 Windows accomplishes this, and you can think of this program as a driver for your DualSense controller. First step. Factory hardware reset. This resets the controller to its default settings and resets any pairing, especially if you bought a second-hand controller. The reset button is at the back of the controller. I use a needle and use the back part of it to avoid puncturing the button. This next step is optional. Download the firmware updater for the PlayStation 5 controller on the official website. The link is in the description. The controller can be connected to your PC via USB-C to USB-A connection as shown. Make sure that you also use a USB cable that is also capable of data transfer for the firmware update to be possible, as not all USB cables are the same. If you use a cable that is only for charging, then the firmware update will not work. Run the program and then connect your controller via USB cable to your computer. Make sure that you do not turn off or disconnect the controller while the firmware is updating, otherwise the controller may get corrupted and you may need to reset it using the factory reset button at the back as shown previously. You have to finish the firmware update before disconnecting the controller. In my case, I have already updated my controller to the latest firmware version just recently. If you bought the controller out of the box, it will usually be not updated. Just a quick note. Steam will also bug you to update your controller's firmware if you haven't. Next step, download and install the VIGME bus driver here. This is the actual driver software that communicates directly to your controller and is mandatory for DS4 Windows as well. In my experience, Installing the bus driver from the DS4 Windows program results in a botched installation as of this time of posting, hence I recommend downloading it from this link instead. If we install the bus driver now, there will be no need to install it later when we install DS4 Windows. Next. We need to install Microsoft Framework Runtime Dependencies in order to run the program, otherwise it will not work. You can download them here and then install them, or if you choose, you can skip ahead and download DS4 Windows. DS4 Windows will then prompt you to install the Microsoft Framework Runtime Dependencies. You cannot run the program without it. After this, download and run DS4 Windows. When you first set it up, it will ask where you want to place its configuration files. There is no right or wrong answer here as it is a preference. I choose to place them to the program's folder since it is a portable installation. I will not go through all of the options of the program, but I will only go through the basic setup in order to get your controller running. Connect your controller to your PC and you should see that your controller light up. Once connected, the controller will light up into white and then settle to blue to signify that you are player one. You should also see your controller listed in the DS4 program. If it does not, you may have a faulty installation of the VIGME bus driver. If this is the case, you need to do a fresh install of the bus driver once that's done, that's it. There's no need to configure anything.
The default profile is usually sufficient enough for most people since it maps out the correct buttons of the controller to the program. Run PCSX2, then go to Config, Controllers, Plugin Settings. Make sure DX Wireless Controller is listed. This is your DualSense controller, and that X input is enabled. Once done, go to pad 1 and we will bind the controls. You can follow along with my button presses. In your first setup, the controls will be empty. You can delete a control by selecting it and then press the delete key. You can do this if you make a mistake when binding the controls to redo it. For controls L3 and R3, you push onto the left and right analog sticks respectively. Save the controls once you are done and try them out to see if it works. The process for mapping controls to RPCS3 is similar. Run RPCS3, then go to Pad. For handlers, choose SDL, as of the latest version of this time of posting. The reason why I chose SDL is because it is what worked with my controller. The handler can change over time. After that, we then map out the controls.
Once you're done, click save and exit. Try it out in-game and see if it works. What's up there you go. Guy? Four helmets in a row, you win five bucks. Right on the button. One last thing. Be careful not to use any random charger on your DualSense controller, because it only accepts 5 volts. Using a charger that is greater than 5 volts can cause damage to your controller or fry its circuitry. Be sure to use a genuine charger that only outputs 5 volts or better instead. Plug it into your computer to charge. USB ports are standardized to output 5 volts. I would not plug it in however to a USB hub because the output of a hub may not necessarily be consistent. Thanks for watching. If this has helped you, consider liking and subscribing. Happy gaming.